Somewhat lost in the noise of political battle on the threshold of the national election, SpaceX's Polaris Dawn mission has made a giant leap for mankind. It's not just about cutting-edge technologies that will shape the future of commercial spaceflight, but also the promise of a new record for reusability on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. That's what an astronaut revealed after the historic spaceflight. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. SpaceX, as we all know, had an extraordinary three quarters of 2024, characterized by record-breaking achievements. So far, the company has launched Falcon 9's 90th mission. In addition, it has launched a Falcon Heavy rocket and two starships, bringing the total number of launches to 93. Meanwhile, last year's record is 98 launches, including 91 launches of Falcon 9 rockets, five Falcon Heavy launches, and two starship test flights. This year, SpaceX aims at 148 launches, but that goal is significantly constrained by the regulators, typically the FAA. However, despite the unreasonable fines and delays, SpaceX is still soaring ahead and making its enemies bow in admiration. It's exactly what SpaceX has done with its five-day Polaris Dawn mission. The mission was notable for its numerous history-making activities, including the first commercial spacewalk, the first test of SpaceX's brand new EVA suit, and climbing higher over Earth than any previous human spaceflight since the last Apollo astronauts left for the moon in 1970. On September 15th, the Crew Dragon Resilience carrying four astronauts returned to Earth by splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico. Three days later, the capsule is back at Cape Canaveral on the recovery vessel Shannon. Under the view of the camera, Resilience looks like a marshmallow being toasted to perfection. According to Jared Isaacman, Polaris's commander, there will be no need for much touch-up on the vehicle ahead of the neck go. That was our spaceship, Crew Dragon Resilience. It looks like she could use a bit of a touch-up before the next go. We have so much appreciation for the mission control and recovery team that brought us back safely. One of the maintenance requirements is to strip and reapply the back shell, which is made of an ablative material before subsequent flights. This process is essential to ensure the spacecraft's safety and performance during future missions. One of the most important parts of any spacecraft is the thermal protection system, with the heat shield being the primary component. The heat shield protects spacecraft from the immense destructive power of atmospheric reentry. An ablative heat shield, as as SpaceX uses on Dragon's primary heat shield, works by heating part of the material itself into gas and burning away, thus moving the heat build up away from the capsule. By comparison, a thermal soak heat shield, as was used on the space shuttle, is designed to absorb the heat and radiate it without the material burning away. The thickness of the Dragon capsule's heat shield allows it to act partially as a thermal soak, but the outer layer will still ablate, reducing the heat shield thickness. It explains why the SpaceX crew Dragon capsule looks bad burned from re-entry. In the future, the vehicle will prove itself worthy of more flights, possibly many more as NASA and SpaceX look to extend the lifespan of Crew Dragon spacecraft from 5 to 15 flights. This initiative is part of an extended certification process that will involve rigorous testing of all components of the spacecraft. NASA officials have indicated that a requalification campaign will be conducted to assess whether the spacecraft can safely complete additional flight. This process will involve evaluating components that have been exposed to the space environment over time. SpaceX is currently performing qualification tests of every single component on the Dragon spacecraft in order to determine how many flights the spacecraft might be capable of making. Among a fleet of four Dragons, Endeavour has flown the most, which completed its fifth flight during the Crew-8 mission, marking the limit for current operational capability. Fresh of Crew-8, NASA and SpaceX plan to analyze various components of the spacecraft that have been exposed to the space environment up and down for many years. Even though many of the smaller components on the Crew Dragon spacecraft have been replaced, the primary structures of the capsule, the weldment, radial bulkheads, and pressure shell, remain original. The demand for extending Dragon's lifespan has raised since SpaceX ended production of new Crew Dragon astronaut capsules in 2022. Capping the fleet at four Crew Dragons adds more urgency to the development of the astronaut capsule's eventual successor, Starship. It poses new challenges as the company learns how to maintain a fleet and quickly fix unexpected problems without holding up a busy schedule of astronaut missions. There's lifetime cycle issues, where once you start using it the third, fourth, fifth time, you start finding different things, said retired NASA astronaut and former SpaceX executive Garrett Reisman, who now consults for the company on human spaceflight matters. SpaceX is really good about identifying these issues quickly and then acting quickly to fix them, Reisman added, pointing to an investigation in 20. 
2021 in which SpaceX discovered and fixed within months a toilet leak aboard a Crew Dragon capsule that had flown humans twice. SpaceX's ability to successfully reuse Dragon and even push it to its limit has been proven by what they did on C-207 Resilience, which has already served Polaris Dawn. The spacecraft is well known for its history of successful missions, with three flights. When mentioning C-207, can't help but mention its historic maiden flight on November 16, 2020, which marks the first of six NASA-certified commercial system flights, including significant missions to the International Space Station, ISS, and private space flights. It's also the first NASA-certified private spacecraft successfully docked with the International Space Station. The previous successful launch on May 30th, 30th, 2020, was the Demo-2 test flight with the Dragon spacecraft named Endeavour. On September 16, 2021, resilience continued to reach a higher level with Inspiration-4, the first fully private and all-civilian orbital mission. Following Inspiration-4, we have Polaris Dawn, which is famous for many first things. From the beginning, the flight marked the first time that SpaceX saw two of its own employees launch on its spacecraft. Gillis and Menon are lead space operation engineers at the company, the earlier overseeing astronaut training and the latter serving in mission control. In addition to being a mission specialist, Menon also took on the role of the crew's medical officer. Less than 24 hours after reaching their preliminary orbit, the crew achieved their first goal, climbing higher over Earth than any previous human spaceflight since the last Apollo astronauts left for the moon in 1972. In reaching 1,408.1 kilometers, the Polaris Dawn crew broke the 58-year-old record set by NASA's Gemini 11 crew by 35 kilometers. Gillis and Menon also shared a new record for the farthest distance traveled away from Earth by a woman. The mission's second day witnessed the Polaris Dawn astronauts contribute to a new record for the most humans in Earth orbit at the same time. Together with their four-member contingent, the three crewmates aboard a newly launched Russian Soyuz, three Taikonauts on China's space station, and the nine astronauts and cosmonauts on the International Space Station totaled 19 people off the planet. In this way, Petit, Gillis, and Menon became the 618th, 619th, and 620th people to orbit Earth and the 705th through 707th people to fly into space. Meanwhile, Isaac Mann was the 568th in orbit and 588th in space when he launched on Inspiration 4. Simultaneously, these rookies were SpaceX's 50th, 51st, and 52nd astronauts to fly on Dragon. On the mission's third day, Isaac Mann, Poteet, Gillis, and Menon became the first four people to be exposed to the vacuum of space at the same time when the Dragon was depressurized in preparation for the world's first commercial spacewalk. Isaac Mann and Gillis later performed SpaceX's brand new EVA suit for the first time. Or we cannot forget the first violin performance in space, performed by SpaceX's engineer, Sarah Gillis, via SpaceX's Starlink satellite network. Gillis Gillis played Ray's theme from Star Wars The Force Awakens, as composed by John Williams. Once transmitted to Earth, Gillis's solo was mixed with various recorded orchestral performances to produce Harmony of Resilience. Additionally, the crew conducted 36 experiments from 31 partners, including NASA, Johns Hopkins University, and the United States Air Force Academy. Polaris Dawn is the first mission in the Polaris program that will demonstrate new technologies, conduct extensive research, and ultimately culminate in the first flight of SpaceX's Starship with humans on board. On September 16th, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk shared an inspirational photo showing the 18-year journey from the first Falcon flight of Falcon 1 failed to the success of the Making History mission, Polaris Dawn. What an incredible progress. 18 years have passed, and look how far SpaceX has come from a humble beginning to now leading the future of space exploration. Can't wait to see where SpaceX will go in the next 18 years. Elon sets the goal. The first unmanned starships to Mars will launch in two years, and the first crewed flights to Mars will be between 2030 and 2032. If all goes according to plan, in the next 18 years, we will have established a large amount of infrastructure and people there. Of course, everything meaningful starts with a baby step, and SpaceX has achieved a baby but important 
leap forward in the Polaris' first commercial spacewalk. It's testing their brand new spacesuit, the EVA suit. Building a base on the moon in a city on Mars will require thousands of spacesuits. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be important steps toward a scalable design for spacesuits on future long-duration missions. The vacuum environment in the Van Allen radiation belt allowed SpaceX to collect a number of data on what to expect during an actual EVA. SpaceX's EVA suit on the outside looks like a bulkier version of their intravehicular activity, IVA suits, pressure suits worn during the launch and landing of a spacecraft, but not designed to operate in the exposed vacuum of space. The suit worked flawlessly during a recent spacewalk, and we're awaiting an update from SpaceX on the data collected from the test. With extensive experience in developing space gear and abundant resources, SpaceX should not rule out the chance to mobilize a new team to develop an EVA suit for NASA. Based on modifications to the suit they are already working on. As you know, NASA has selected Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace to build and maintain its new generation of spacesuits. Axiom's suit will be used during NASA's Artemis moon missions, and Collins's new generation of suits will be used for the International Space Station. NASA hopes to use this new suit on the ISS by 2026. Despite the huge amount of investment up to $3.5 billion, NASA's plan is now facing challenges more than ever. In June, Collins declared that it would exit the program. According to the sources, it is due to being behind schedule, drastically underperforming, and overspending on their exevas work. This is arguably a wise move by the company to avoid suffering heavy losses due to the side effects of fixed price contracts, or they can ask NASA for additional funding if any. It's unclear at this point how Collins backing out might affect the timeline of spacesuit development. Theoretically, NASA doesn't need to seek immediate recompete the exevas, the functional requirements for the two suits of Axiom and Collins are very, very close. So, if Collins leaves, the national agency could ask Axiom to actually start working on the other what they call platform. However, because their motto is always redundancy, it's highly likely that NASA would seek to bring a new partner on board to compete with Axiom. In that case, one of the bidders could be SpaceX, which has already tested its brand new spacesuit in the private Polaris Dawn mission. In August 2021, Elon also expressed his desire desire to cooperate with NASA to develop EVA suits for moon landing. We are pretty sure that, so far, he has not given up on his desire, and that might be one of his big motivations for modernizing the suits to make them much better than NASA's old-school spacesuits. NASA's Extravehicular Mobility Unit, EMU, has been worn by ISS astronauts since 1981, but weighs over 100 pounds without life support systems. Overall, NASA EVA suits are massive, hard to get into and out of, and phenomenal nominally unwieldy. The fingers on an astronaut's gloves are so hard to manage that NASA has run competitions trying to get a better design that's easier to work in. In the space shuttle era, when the number of astronauts increased, NASA chose to make spacesuits in different sizes. The idea was that astronauts could mix and match torsos, arms, and legs to create a spacesuit that fit, which largely hasn't worked well in practice. Those parts come in only a few different sizes, meaning astronauts have to select which size of the glove for example, is the closest approximation to their hand size. But for several rigid components like the upper torso and rear entry hatch, that is a bigger problem. Many women's bodies are differently shaped than men's. Women can have wider hips, narrower shoulders, that sort of thing. That makes it even more uncomfortable for the women astronauts to fit into these spacesuits. NASA has acknowledged that one of the problems with its current EMUs is the fact that it limits the astronauts who can perform EVAs. By contrast, the Polaris suits are designed to be almost entirely entirely soft, helping astronauts move more comfortably. For the Polaris Dawn mission, the SpaceX suits are custom-made for each crew member. However, SpaceX plans to make the suit more scalable and easier to produce in the future. It's driven by their motivation to be able to produce millions of suits for bases on the Moon and Mars. So the design needs to accommodate different body types. So it's not unfathomable that SpaceX's suits are totally fit for professional astronauts. Things will even be much easier in this case because NASA has the astronauts' measurements, so custom suits can be made without them being physically present. However, having the astronauts there allows checking that the range of motion isn't constricted, as body shapes change when moving around. Furthermore, SpaceX's brand new spacesuit is highly estimated in its modern technologies, and this definitely brings the astronauts a great experience in space. We have a lot of different resources at our disposal here, Chris Trigg, SpaceX spacesuit manager, said during a talk in 2022. There's some thermal material that we end
ended up using on the boot, which was developed actually for Falcon and Dragon, and is used on the inner stage on Falcon and on the trunk of Dragon. Trig also described a new heads-up display inside the helmet, allowing astronauts to view data about their suit's internal temperature, humidity, and pressure. The display also exhibits a mission clock to monitor the durations of particular EVA tasks. The outstanding feature is the comfort and lightness that the suit brings, no less than what the IVA performs. The comfortability fires Scott Kid Poteet up, who is a mission pilot for the Polaris Dawn SpaceX mission. The suit fits like a glove, so comfortable it's hard not to take micro naps between sim sessions. I think visor is one of my favorite aspects. Only EVA suit ever built with single layer visor. Jared Isaacman said that his team spent every week testing different materials on the left arm versus the right arm, different rotators on the left arm, and different wrist mechanisms. They tried a lot of trial and error, but the results were completely worth it because the spacewalk usually requires the astronauts to perform EVAs and work on or inspect the exterior of their Crew Dragon or Starship spacecraft. SpaceX's first priority then will be to make sure that the basics work well in space and that the suits actually allow astronauts to perform tasks that require good finger and limb dexterity without immediately exhausting themselves. The new joint designs on the suit remain soft until pressurized while maintaining mobility, which is really decent dexterity in the fingers, very good mobility, and good flexibility, even down to the knees and waist. Maintaining the pressure inside the suit at a low level, 5.1 PSI could avoid turning it into a balloon, making it easy for mobility. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.